So with this question here, um, quite often we want to see real world applications of solving psi uh, trigonometric equations. Um, now and then in, in past HSCs, they've loved to put in trig equations that require some realistic aspect to it as well. So before we jump in to any context that the question's in, let's just have a look at our function, the trig function we've been given to start with. Um, is it in degrees or radians? Radians, what gives away that it's in radians? There's a pi on six in there. All right, how can you, um, is everyone comfortable with that? This trig function, it's had some translations applied to it, right? So to begin with, there's a vertical shift, right? There's a plus two with our vertical shift, right? So that means the whole graph has been moved up, right? It's then, the whole function has been multiplied by half. So instead of going, between what it normally was, it's now half the size of whatever it was at the beginning. And pi on 6, that's a number less than 1. So what it means is we've got a, a stretch in our, di in our dilation. Our period has been expanded here. All right. So we can, we can start, if we start to recognize those situations and think about this not as like, oh, this is a question about and tides and 10 a.m.s and times and ah, it's really just a sine curve that's been manipulated and we're going to use our understanding of how it's been manipulated to help us answer some of these questions. So now let's put it into context. The depth of the water in meters is given by the equation, I would call it the function, d of t is equal to 2 plus half of sine pi on 6t, where t is the number of hours after 10 a.m. I think that's probably important to remember that it's after 10 a.m. So 10 a.m. would be like time zero. 11 a.m. would be one, would give us an answer of one. If we'd got one as our answer in our function, that would be then 11 a.m. And we can keep on going like that. How deep will the water be at high tide? And conversely, how deep will it be at low tide? That's when we start to think about it, you're like, okay, well, what are we gonna do there? But the beautiful thing is that this is a sine curve. So if this was just the depth equals sine of t, if we had no manipulation of our sine curve whatsoever, its greatest value would ever, at no matter what time we're looking at, be 1, and its minimum value at low tide would be minus 1, wouldn't it? Because sine always oscillates between 1 and minus 1. That comfortable? If you don't feel comfortable saying yes, some head nods would be lovely. Cool, thumbs up, love it. But we know we've had a vertical shift and we've reduced it, haven't we? So that multiplying sine by half, instead of going between one and minus one, it's now going between half and negative half. Everyone comfortable with that? And then the vertical shift of it being raised up by two means instead of going at positive half, it's now positive two and a half. Instead of being negative half, it's positive one and a half. So this tide, it oscillates based on the sine function between 2.5 and 1.5. Its greatest value will be 2.5. Its lowest value will be 1.5. Yeah? How deep will the water be at high tide? At high tide, it, we're looking for its greatest possible value. So we know that that would be 1, because that's when sine by itself has a maximum value of 1. We're going to multiply that by half, because that's what's happened to the sine curve. And we're going to add 2 to that, because our sine curve has had that vertical shift. So the, great, so the high tide equals the greatest value. It's going to be at 2.5 metres high. Is that okay? <laughs> the question on face value, like how, how are we meant to tackle that? But when we focused it, it was just a sine curve. It just goes between one and minus one, but we've moved that around somewhere. That's all we, that question is really just going, do you know that sine goes between two values? 
do you know it goes between one and minus one? And if I change some dial, if I make some translations to sine, can you make those translations to one and minus one? That's what that first question is asking. The high tide, the greatest value. Low tide, well, it's going to be the exact same thing. It's going to be negative one times half. And you're going to add two to that. So that's going to be 1.5 meters. Just that, that idea that sine goes between one and minus one. Yes, no, maybe. Cool, I'm right to move on to question B. Let's crack on to B. All right, B, mid-tide. Mid-tide occurs when the depth of the water is exactly halfway between high tide and low tide. From 10 a.m., what are the first two times when it is mid-tide? Is that okay? So, the first thing, if I'm reading this question, I want to know the value of mid-tide. Mid-tide is halfway between high tide and low tide. So the first thing I'm going to look at is mid-tide. Because it's halfway, it's the average of my high tide and my low tide, the midpoint of those two things, the median. So it's just 1.5 plus 2.5 over two, didn't need to do that because I can figure out that that's two meters. Is that all right? So we know midpoint now, mid tide, it's got a two meters worth of depth. I'll scroll that up a little bit for you there. Is that comfortable there? So we, we've got that piece of information out. We know its value. Scrolling back to the question, it wants to know from 10 a.m. the first two times when it is mid-tide. So from 10 a.m. Remember 10 a.m. being time zero. So remember if I got a solution of one, that's one hour after 10 a.m. I've got a solution of 10, that's 10 hours after. Okay? So what we are looking for here in question B is when is, uh, what do we want? We want two because that's our depth, two meters is our depth, equal to two plus half of sine of pi on six t. How about we just draw that? So that's the equation that we've been asked to solve. Is that okay? Do we like our equation in that format? Not really. Let's see if we can tidy it up a little bit to make life a bit easier. Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to uh, take away two from both sides, and when I take away two from both sides, something happens that we really like as mathematicians. It becomes really easy. When does sine equal zero? That's something we know. If I divide everything by half to get rid of that half out the front of sine, it's still going to be, or oh, sorry, divide by half times by half, or times by two got times by two and times everything by two to get rid of that half. I'm still just left with when is zero equal to sine of pi on six t. Does that make sense? That's an equation we know how to solve. When does sine theta, let's ignore our pi on six t, ignore that part, just say when is sine of some angle, sine theta equal to zero. So let's start to think in our unit circle. If we was to on if we was to, that's great English. I know, right? And that's gonna make the video now. Um, on the right hand side here, draw our, our unit circle. Boom. Right? We know at this point and that point there, sine of theta is gonna equal zero. Yeah? because sine deals with our y coordinate. So what, what angles are they? We know that our angle will be, we know pi on six t. Let's start to do some laps. At the very beginning, zero. Then it's gonna be at minus pi. Not minus pi, just pi. S apologies for that. It should just be pi. Then it's going to be two pi. 
and let's just do another lap around the unit circle for fun. Um, what's 2 pi plus pi? So 2 pi, so we're looking at 3 pi. And at 4 pi, and so on. Does that make sense? Is that cool so far? And we know that our angle pi on 6t is equal to 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on. Now we're just left with algebra. We've done all the trigonometry part. We've done all our trig. This repeated solutions is our trig. We just need to find out the value of t. To find t, we just divide everything by pi on 6, don't we? Which is cool. I'm just going to just sneaky cheat and go... Um, how about we draw a nice line? I'm just going to divide everything over here by pi and 6. Well, t is going to equal 0. Um, if I'm dividing by pi, and, actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to change how I write that just to make life easier. Instead of dividing by pi and 6, I'm going to multiply everything on this side by 6 over pi, because that's going to cancel at pi and 6. If I'm dividing by a fraction, I can multiply by its reciprocal. So pi times 6 on pi, that's just going to be 6, isn't it? So we know then 6. 2 pi times 6 on pi, that's 12, isn't it? Because the pi's cancel each other out. Everyone's seeing the pattern that's happening here? 18, 24, dot, dot, dot. That's interesting. It's a pattern. All those are within our domain. What did our question actually ask? The first yeah, the first two times from 10 a.m. Well, zero, what did z zero hours, zero hours meant zero hours after 10, which means it's 10. That's not what we, asked, what we were asked. The question said, if we go back up to it, from 10 a.m., what are the first two times it occurs? Hang on, let me just rethink that. From 10 a.m. I think that includes 10 a.m. Because it says from 10. It doesn't say after 10. It says from 10. So beginning at 10, what are the first two times when it is mid-tide? So I'm thinking we include 10 as a solution here. All right? So, oh, I got close to my next question. Let's get you, get you out of the way a bit. Um, so, therefore, we have 10 a.m., which is zero hours after 10 a.m., and now we want to go six hours after 10 a.m., which is 4 p.m. Was that okay? See how that was just a simple manipulation of our sine curve? All we're doing is what we know about sine, how it behaves, and then doing all the trigonometry part, and then after we've answered the trig part, going, well, now how does that apply to the situation? How did 0, 6, 12, and 18 apply? Well, they're hours after 10 o'clock. Everyone comfortable with that so far? Like this question so far? I like this question so far. We're not going to get too much further. Um, let's... Oh. Let's look at this one. Let's go pink, purple. How many hours are there between two successive high tides? Now, for me, that's interesting. How many hours are there between two successive high tides? So I want back-to-back -back high tides. Um, that was question D, isn't it? D or C? C. C, cool. So if I, what I want to think about here is I'm just going to quickly go like this. Um, let's actually move that down to here somewhere because it's going to be... Yeah, okay, that's a really dodgy sign curve drawing. Sorry, my second curve is, is not great. Um, actually, I want to do that again.
That's a bit better. Still not great, but a bit better. Now it wants to know the time between two successive high tides. So what it's asking, how was it the time and the amount of hours between two successive high tides? Yes, no, maybe? So what it wants to know is, it wants to know that. What does that look like? It's the period. It literally wants to know what is the period of our function. Remember, a period is between two, one point in a full cycle. So what we know is, it's literally just saying, well, what is our period? Well, if it was just sine of x, the period is 2 pi, isn't it? But we don't have just... To, we don't have just sine of x. We have pi on 6, don't we? So remember, our period is going to be equal to 2 pi over whatever our shift is. Yeah. So what we're literally going to do is just do 2 pi divided by pi on 6. Because remember, that was our... our um, Oh, I forgot the word, the thing that multiplied by our x, our a value. Technical name, it will come back to me. I'll put it in subtitles somehow. I'll have to learn how to do that. So 2 pi on pi 6, that's, that we know is just going to equal 12 hours. So there, what we know is there are going to be 12 hours between two successive high tights. Everyone comfortable with that? Cool. We'll leave that question there on Monday. We'll do some working less, uh, working lesson on these type of questions.